Hey everyone, uh, we're going to change gears and go to chapter 9, um, and I'm, I'm saying it's a change of gears because it's, you know, completely new content, not statics. Oh, actually, let's go back a page. This is where your strength and materials starts to happen. Um, so the first topic is stress, and I know I did this a little bit in class, um, but I'm going to go over it again. Um, so, ooh, this is a good place. So the unit for stress is pounds per square inch, and in the near future we should all be talking about Pascal's. So it would be good to be familiar with both, but you know, I, I live in the States and we use PSI for tire pressure and PSI for crock pot, whatever. <laughs> um, you know, uh, how much propane is in the tank? Oh, it's this PSI. Um, but the international standard will be Pascal and so one pound per square inch is like seven kilopascal, 7,000 pascal. Um, so, I haven't even introduced the equation. All right, let's go to this little cute diagram. So, I'm going to make this chopstick. So, if I were to pull this chopstick like this, that's tension, and it's down the axis of the chopstick. The axis would be the long part in the, it, it's probably dead center. Um, and if I were to do compression, I would push the chopstick like that, and it would be like, uh, and so, Your stress in tension and compression is just going to be equivalent to force over area. And here it's emphasizing internal. So, so if I'm pulling on the chopstick, these are my boundary conditions where my hands are. And there is a stress all through from hand to hand. And that stress is on the inside of the chopstick and not necessarily uh, at the boundaries. So like up until now, we've been solving for boundaries and now we're gonna consider what's happening inside uh, each member. And then I sort of introduced this in class earlier. I called it ultim ultimate. Um, so for materials, there will be a point in which uh, it just totally breaks. I'm not going to break a chopstick with my hand with tension. Um, and that's usually what I think of as allow, but there's also um, when it's deformed too much. So there are different possibilities. So now I have, well, so on that vein, I have a toothpick. So, I mean, if I were to pull both the toothpick and the chopstick until they broke, which one would do better is a question. And so you can intuitively know that, like, the chopstick's going to last longer and it's going to take more force to break. And so that's kind of what this is talking about. The force is directly proportional to the area before it breaks. Um, and so if you're if you had the same material, let's say wood, and you knew how strong it was, that would be the Sigma here. This is the Greek symbol sigma. So sigma allowed before it broke. 
then you could solve, you know, for various forces, how much cross-sectional area you need. So the cross-sectional area is just like the circumference of this at a point right here, and it's just like extruded. So it's like it's like when you draw a circle and then you extrude it to get a, th a 3D body. And similarly, this has a you know, much smaller cross-sectional area down here. Uh, so it's, it's not going to handle as much force. So, let's see where example one is. Compact car weighs 2,500 pounds. That's actually a really good estimate for a car from the 90s, I guess. Lifted by a crane. Pass it to a steel cable whose cross-sectional area, they give it straight away, A equals 0.25 inch squared. Um, so if I was going to do this problem, I would just write that down because uh, I want all my information in one little concise spot. Attached to a steel hook is a rod. So the hook as well has a cross-sectional area. So they're probably going to ask for both. 0.40 inch squared. Neglecting the weight of the hook and the cable itself because that would just be you would just multiply the cable weight by the length. It would be pretty easy. Calculate the stresses in the cable and the rod. And so this is you know, almost as simple as it gets to straight tension on the cable here. And so you take your force, and we're talking pound force, 2,500 pound force, and divide it by the both of these areas, which is what they've got there. So pretty cool. And so I'm just gonna call this cable and rod or something like that. So my sigma let me straighten it up. Sigma of my cable hundred pounds. By, they gave me the area. So I, normally they would give you like a diameter, right? And then you'd have to figure out area is pi diameter squared over 4 or pi r squared. Um, so this guy, what do I got to do? Move the decimal, it's 25's cancel. So this is like uh, thousand over point one. So that's kind of like multiplying by ten. So the stress of my cable is ten thousand pounds per square inch. Okay. And now the second one, sigma of my rod, um, just intuitively I have more material, so I would expect it to have less stress. And four inch squared. So like you can almost just see it. Same number on top, different number on bottom. It's gonna give me a lower number. And that's not one you could do in your head. I mean, it could. You could probably just do long division or something. Uh, pretty easy. <coughs> 50 and PSI. You can say PSI. Um, which is also KSI. So if you move the decimal three places. Now, if one of these were to break, which one would it be? 
it would be, oh, assuming they're the same material, then it would be the cable, if they were both the same steel. All right.